Hey there, everybody. Hi, this is Barry Gotch, and welcome to the uh, webinar. This is uh, pre recorded for your viewing pleasure. Uh, we're going to just talk about uh, uh, Sapphire Sparks just briefly. Um, Sapphire Sparks are an industry uh, leading plugin. Sparks is the uh, the Autodesk nomenclature for plugins. Uh, they're the same plugin that you'll find in, in Avid and Final Cut Pro, After Effects, and Nuke. They actually derive from uh, Flame originally and, and trickle down from the, that uh, origination into all these other products. Uh, they've been around for about 16 years and they've been used in uh, everything from TV shows, feature films, music videos. Um, if you go to my website and check out the, the Thundercats music video, I made extensive use of the, uh, the Lightning, uh, the Zap plugin. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's uh, 130 effects. They're resolution independent. Uh, Sapphire 5 came out not that long ago, and uh, they're just a, a brilliant uh, release. Uh, they've uh, increased the speed quite a lot. Their GPU accelerated, and, and uh, it's a huge difference in render times. If you go to the GenArts uh, uh, page on YouTube, you can see speed comparisons that they did between version 4 and version 5 and you'd be amazed at the difference in the rendering. And uh, there's there's about 16 new effects in this this release. Um, so uh, they, they keep adding to the the plugin set. So that, that's that's a good thing. I, I like I like being involved in using uh, products where they're continually being developed and advanced. So very happy to be doing this uh, on behalf of uh, Gen Arts and myself, of course. And and for me, I, I'm a finishing editor. Um, I'm working in Hollywood, California. I'm working on network and cable TV shows. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm using the uh, Sapphire plugins and and different products and the Avid and Smoke uh, to help me, uh, f you know, with with problem solving uh, issues and also with creative issues and. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, what we're going to do is, is break down a TV spot that I did, and uh, I purposely uh, I cut it in Final Cut Pro, and, and I knew I was going to finish it in Smoke. And when I when I put the spot together, I I had the idea that you know look I'm going to put it together kind of bare bones way, and then go ahead and, and take it to um, take it to another place inside of Smoke by using the, the compositing features inside of Smoke and also the uh, the plugin capabilities of the GenArts um, Sapphire plugin. So I'll just go ahead and, and show you that spot right now. And this is the um, sort of the Final Cut Pro version of it where I, I haven't really done things uh, to it yet. You can see that there's a comp that I'm going to do with that sign. Uh, I made a note for myself to do a sky replacement there. And, uh, and you'll see at the end of the spot that I just have a sort of a temporary text, a temporary backplate. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at that spot now. Thought your season was over? Think again! There's still plenty of time to get some air in Mammoth Mountain. Great. Get up to Mammoth for top to bottom coverage with wide open runs and no lip lines. Come up to Mammoth to enjoy fantastic weather and plenty of soft corn snow. Yeah. Ideal for those happy landings. Hurry, because the fun ends July 4th. Call 1-800-MAMMOTH and make your reservation now. All right, so we're going to take a look now at the, um, at the pre-finished version because actually when I started preparing for this webinar, I thought, well, there, there's a few things that I actually didn't like in the final version of the spot. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what uh, I came up with, and then we're going to sort of go back and break some of those things down and talk about how I use the GenArts plugins uh, specifically as uh, fix-it tools and also to enhance it. And, and there's a few things that I, I actually found that I want to make even better uh, with my newfound knowledge of, uh, of these plugins. Thought your season was over? Think again! There's still plenty of time to get some air in Mammoth Mountain. Great. Get up to Mammoth for top to bottom coverage with wide open runs and no lip lines. Ooh. Come up to Mammoth to enjoy fantastic weather and plenty of soft corn snow. Yeah. Ideal for those happy landings. Hurry, because the fun ends July 4th. Call 1-800-MAMMOTH and make your reservation now. 
so you can see that uh, quite a bit of work went in into uh, this spot and, and I'll sort of just break it down a little bit before we get down to really you know going down shot by shot and and having some fun with it so uh, I knew like for example here where those the originally where those three uh, skiers were coming by before that I wanted to do some kind of fun exciting uh, graphical treatment to it so I went ahead and and uh, you can see I did a freeze frame and I've added that uh, that film damage plug in there in the background and and those star shapes are actually a, a plugin that I used uh, to create a mat to cut those stars out. So we'll go back over that. Now this graphical overlay I made in a combination of Photoshop and motion and and track that, hand track that as a matter of fact to follow that along. So we have uh, this shot here. That sign is actually a still frame that I comped and tracked and relit inside of Action. Uh, this one is um, sky replacement. Um, if you remember that sky was like totally blown out and it didn't have any clouds in it. So uh, I went ahead and color corrected the foreground and then tracked in that sky background. This shot here, we're going to go over in a little bit of detail because that originally, uh, because it was a new camera that I had, I didn't know that I shouldn't be shooting interlace for a progressive spot. So that footage is interlaced. We're going to go fix that with the plugin. This one, I actually did quite a lot of work with the secondary color correction inside of smoke, but you can see there's still some banding in the sky. So we're going to take care of that banding as, as much as we can with the D band filter. This is that same overlay that I made. This is some text that I, I did, some 3D text that I did inside of Action. That whole back plate was, was done and generated inside of Smoke. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to sort of dress up some of these spots that don't really have anything going on with them and and um, talk a little bit more about you know how the, this was done. First, I want to take you into a little bit of like a a how-to of using the Sapphire plugins inside of of Smoke and it's a little bit different than you may be used to so I just wanted to sort of discuss that for a minute so the, really the way that you access the the plugins is uh, there's two there's two ways so right now we're looking at a, a sort of a sample timeline that I, I've built up here and um, I'm sure you're familiar with this this image of the Saturn logo or the Saturn. Now you'll see that inside the Sparks browser when when you're actually looking at the thumbnails. When I go ahead and want to apply a Sapphire plugin to uh, to a clip, there's two different ways of doing it. There's as a soft effect in the timeline, and then there's actually on the desktop. So in your tools menu, you'll see that one of them is Sparks. So we'll just uh, I'll just show you the the regular one. This is the the basic the video tools here, where we have the resize and strobe and changing field dominance and and those kind of tools. And underneath that tool, we have the sparks. And the way you access them, you can see that I've I've been up doing a little preparation work for everything. But the way that you go ahead and access the sparks on the desktop if, to do a desktop effect is that you you tap on one of these wells and that will fill in that effect that you chose but if you want to grab a new effect or if these wells are empty you hold down the alt or the option key you tap on it and then you'll get this list of plugins and if you look at the top here you'll see that here's the path inside of your application user discrete spark sapphire 5 and uh, this is helpful to see the see them in this this list view or titles view but if I tap over here for proxies, that's where you'll see that familiar planet, uh, the Saturn image, and how it looks uh, as applied to the clip. So that that's that's really helpful to have those those thumbnails directly inside the application. So, like auto paint is really kind of a fun one. So I'll just tap on the auto paint and just quickly apply that to to our Saturn. So then I tap on this now that I've selected it and um, you'll have to excuse the recording but this is actually a red selection arrow 
and that means I'm selecting the front which is this input source over here so that's that is what it's saying like okay uh, I need one input and that's the source and that's why the selection cursor is red so I'll just tap in the upper left corner where those time code numbers are of that image and then I get the white cursor which is the result cursor and I'll just tap into an empty spot on the desktop so uh, just as a quick glance um, you can see that the the plugin controls are a little bit different than you're used to seeing they're, they're the same controls that they have in the different plugins it's a little bit different in the sense that for the Autodesk plugins it's uh, all these auto paint um, plugins are all under one one parameter or one plugin so you have the familiar sketchy bumpy sketch pointalize all underneath this one plugin uh, category the auto paint so and you don't see any kind of movement here because we only have it selected to a duration of one frame and that's the, the duration of that one clip was a frame but if I want to make it longer and, and see anything I just tap into that well I give it a duration of 10 frames now I can scrub across that and and quickly create a, an animation basically creating something from nothing from a single frame so I, I kinda like the the Van Gogh look that's kind of a, a cool look or the Harry paint is a fun one too and and the, the adjustments that the main adjustment when you run to one of the uh, the Sapphire plugins is that the the top couple of Pl uh, parameters here are the ones that you'll be looking at to, to get your overall quick effect look so you don't have to dig through and wade through tons of different um, parameters to quickly get uh, an update and you can see how fast this is updating this is an HD frame size and you can see I'm just dragging here just like checking it out and like oh yeah that's looking good and and that's that's really how I like to work with the plugins is just sort of just by feel and and finding something that looks cool and and going with it rather than studying the guide and like okay if I if I move stroke length to point nine instead of point zero two two I'm gonna get X result I, I'm I'm kind of a little bit more uh, a guy who's just you know likes to experiment and play and that's I think that's most of you out there that are creative creative types. If you do need to have access to the all the different parameters or you're curious about them, all the plugins will have this little crop help button over here on the lower left. And so if you tap on that, you'll see that you can there we go. Uh, if you click on this help button here, uh, what that's going to do is going to pop you up into a web browser page and that's going to load which ships with all the plugins, all the parameters for the auto paint, hairy paint. And then if you really need to get into uh, the smooth colors, stroke length, stroke align, frequency, all that information is there for you to for you to check out and, and really dig dig deeply into if you if you want to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the first frame and I kinda like how this looks. I'm gonna hit process and you'll see in the lower left there's process and uh, a little drop down if I click on that creating history will create uh, a clip history with that so if I need to go back and, and change that and um, I'll be able to quickly and have that sort of setting saved with the with the result and you can see here on the desktop there's a little H there so when I use that in the timeline, that'll that'll bring it back into the um, that'll bring it back into that Sparks browser. I can show you how that works. I so just drop this clip down onto the timeline here. Just make a little room for it. It's only 10 frames long. Now it was set originally. Do you see the the nine frames there? That's because it was set originally for one frame, and that's what, what those uh, brackets were. So I can just go ahead and trim that out really, really quickly. And if I need to go back in and change that, I just double tap onto the H. That brings me back into this, um, into the plugin, and I can change it to pointalize. And then when I exit out of this, I hit return. It's going to render that. That plugin with the new effect on it. 
So that's that's one way of, of using it, um, using it on the desktop, then adding it into your program, and then you have that H icon. The the sort of the drawback or the sort of the minus to that is that it doesn't say live for you to go and modify. It's it's you're rendering it and creating new media uh, each time. So that's why there's no dots or dashes or any kind of uh, render. Uh, icon or render notification on that clip. So if you look at down here on the timeline, you can see that I've I've added some soft effects, and you can see that the ones that are rendered over here on the on the lower uh, over here have that black line, which means that they're rendered. The the that sort of dashed and then the dots means that that one frame is rendered, and this white line means they're totally unrendered and that's that's true of any soft effect not just the sapphire plugins but in any plugin so um so yeah so then the the other way of, of working with the plugins with the sapphire effects is not here um through these desktop tools which creates media media all the time but as a soft effect and the soft effects are all here on the left hand edge of the timeline and you can see that they're numbered here one through eight and the sparks are number three and that's, uh, that's significant because um, there's a shortcut key that we'll discuss in just a moment okay so we want to go ahead and add a, a soft effect to the shot in the timeline and it's really simple you just select the clip you go over here on the left hand side again to your soft effects you select that that adds in that adds that soft effect to the clip you can see there's that white line there that I just discussed showing you that we've added a, a soft effect an unrendered one by default the auto key is turned on which I like to turn off and in terms of processing priority if you have multiple effects we want to just indent that over here so you can see that this is going to be the one that pops up when we get when we hit escape to look at the uh, viewer so and that's what this empty well is over here that's as I discussed before how uh, it would look if there was no um, plugins loaded on the um, on the tools menu so that means that this is an empty well it's ready for us to add a, a plugin to so I'll just tap in there and say I want to add uh, the cartoon look it's kind of a fun look so I'm going to add that cartoon look to that shot and uh, and it's added on there and you can see as, as I stop on a frame we get that little line which means it's rendering it uh, that frame as we go along so that's really cool that works with any soft effect but which what that means is that you know as you go along and scrub through it and and check it out you're actually rendering it so by the time you're done there's less frames to render because it saves all of those intermediate renders so we'll just remove that for now and that's what I discussed before was that we want to just take that effect off but save it here and and that's what one of the workflow suggestions that I, I have for you guys is that um, it's really great to have access to the to all the sparks here uh, as a desktop tool and also here through the sparks on the soft effect but I, I really like to work fast one of the shortcuts I like to do is, is being able to save these in, in a separate um, a separate library or separate source area so that's what I have up here on the left is that I've saved off uh, some sort of pre-built effects and transitions and the way that I'm going to do that is if I hold down the control three keys and click on that clip, the tip of my pen, you can see I got that little SP, which stands for spark. So I'm going to drop that here in the, in the source area. And I'm going to hit escape. And that's going to do a, a quick render of that one frame. So basically, I've just created a thumbnail of the cartoon effect so you can see it still says Saturn over here but I'll just tap in this bar on the left hit escape and I'll just type in cartoon and so I know that's the cartoon effect and anytime I need to access that you know I have smoke is telling me this is a soft uh, spark soft effect where it says SP soft effect 
and I just labeled it cartoon so I know that I can have access to that. So say I want to uh, have the TV damage plugin instead of that, if I hold down the F key, you can see that uh, green cursor pop up and that means copy. So I'm just going to copy that effect and drop it on here and that's going to replace the cartoon effect and it's going to replace it with a TV damage plugin right there which you just saw. What we want to do is um, add a bunch of effects to a shot. So the way you do that is that you do you create something that's called a container. So I would select this clip, hit container, and then double tap on it. And then I can add layers here with a layer button on the lower left. And I can add soft effects in just by dragging and dropping. So say I wanted to add the scan lines effect here, I would just hold the F key down again, drag it to that empty timeline, and it's added that in. So if I move the playhead, which is this yellow this yellow hash mark there, if I move that up through the effect, you can see that I'm actually changing the result. You can see it maybe a little bit better here, like this. So then to exit the container, I just hit exit here in the lower left. And then uh, down here, I've actually created a more of a, a multi-layer effect. So if I double tap, I go into this container. Um, I've added, uh, that's, that's also kind of a unique thing about the um, Sapphire soft effects, is that you can add them onto empty tracks in your timeline like I just demonstrated. And the way that works is that you just, like I showed you before, you just add, add a layer. It's an empty layer, and you can drop an effect on it. Just as simple as that. So now I've got four, I have four effects on one clip that's still being seen as one clip in the timeline. So now I've added the, the crazy cartoon look, the uh, edge rays, and then a vignette on top of that. So now I have four effects on one clip in the timeline. So let's just cycle through those again. So there's the unaffected shot, there's a cartoon, there's a scan line, the edge rays, and vignette. And uh, you can see that these have names on them because I went ahead and renamed them. So if you hold down your pen button, your top pen button, and uh, you can see you get a little rename field here. So I can just type in cartoon and you'll see that here on the timeline to remind you what the effect is. So you don't really get a, a visual representation of what that effect is if you don't do that. So that's a, a good tip on, on sort of keeping track of what your effects are. And you know if you don't like that you can just grab the hot key over here, the hot button and just remove it and that's going to put it back to the way that it was with the three layers and basically deleting a layer off that out of that container and going back to the way it originally was so we've got the scan lines the edge rays and the vignette and you can see that white hash mark line or the excuse me the black hash mark line saying that okay we're parked there we looked at that frame and it's rendered in so it's gone ahead and cached that and and here's that exit button down here on the lower left to get out of the container. And the reason you want to containerize things is because you know you'd want to do a transition from another clip. So I've got uh, the flies eyes effect on here that I've tweaked a little bit, and then I'm having that shot dissolve into that container with those three effects. So I'm having one a clip with one sapphire effect dissolve into the next shot with uh, multiple effects. And you'll have to excuse the, the performance a little bit because I'm running this on a, a MacBook with a Fire, uh, FireWire 800 drive. So it's not the sort of the optimum performance that you'd want, but it, it does really a great job. So you can see that we're dissolving between the two shots of the fly eyes effect and this multi-layered um, uh, plugin, uh, multi-layered Sapphire plugin, and then just just for fun, on top I've added that glow transition, and then the blur on top of that. So you can see that quite quickly you can come up with really interesting, fun, and looks 
with just a little bit of effort. I think that's the whole point of it really is that, you know, you can take sort of bare bones footage and really make something fun and exciting, you know, out of just anything really. That's really the fun of working with these plugins and, and doing what we love to do is is creating some fun, amazing stuff. So yeah, that that looks pretty cool. So we're just gonna switch over to the next uh next timeline which is another great feature of of smoke is that you can have multiple timelines uh open in your uh in your in your project and jump quickly between them just like we did so what i've done to this um this timeline you can see that there's these uh bars here and those are actually the, what are called q marks and those q marks are sort of little uh breadcrumbs i've left for myself to to see what we need to address to, to sort of finish off the spot here. So this is the spot as it came across from Final Cut. I've, obviously, I've done some of the I've done the composites, um, and uh, I've done most of that work uh, already. Um, but we're going to go ahead and and sort of take take it to the next level. Uh, as I mentioned before, just some of the things that occurred to me when I was digging in and preparing for this webinar things that I could do better that's what it's all about really for me is you know you look at something and you work on it and now you wanna you go back to it and it's like oh yeah hey let's let's do that or let's do this and that's that's part of being a, a finisher and creative finishing and and having access to these great tool sets you know that you have in smoke and and with the sapphire plugins is that you know you have this flexibility to you know, take something that you that was done and and you know add to it and create a, a better product than you were originally given, and that's exactly what we're going to do. First, we're going to take care of some sort of housekeeping things. Now, this clip when it was added to the timeline, you can see on, over on the left here that it's got a resize to it, and it's got a resize to it because it's a different frame rate and a different. Uh, it's also progress. It's interlaced instead of progressive. So if I hold down the the key, the the Alt key, you can see I get this pop up. And if I go over to another clip, you'll see it's 2398P on this clip. But over here, you get the F1, and this is this clip is 8 bit instead of 10 bit. So that's why it's blue. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. So it'll appear in the in the timeline. Now you can see that I've sort of pre-baked it down here, but we're going to go through the steps to make that happen. So uh, the S field remove. So I'm just going to get um, a, a new source area for working uh, on these uh, on the on these couple of shots here. So I'm going to hit the match button, which is the forward slash, and that's going to match that clip. So now I've got this uh, raw clip with the marks on it from the timeline. And if we uh, go to the full screen, you can see that as, as I step through, and you can see that skier, the guy's interlaced. Oh yeah, and and as you step through it too, you can see that there's no pull down in it; that it's just a pure interlaced clip. And those are some of the worst ones to deal with, you know, fast movement uh, in a progressive project. So we're going to go ahead and fix that using the field remove uh, spark. So I've got it pre-assigned uh, here to one of these wells, so I just tap on it. I click over here in the upper left to select it, and I drop it in. Now, uh, this is no uh, you know, magical thing where it's just going to make it perfect, but we can see with just sort of the base effects that we've gotten rid of a lot of the combing there. You'll see some on the ski poles, and and on the on the slalom um, guide but for the most part it's done a pretty good job uh, right out of the gate um, it also gives you uh, options down here on the bottom of the screen to adjust it and, and like I was saying before uh, I'm just wanting to just make this as best as I can quickly and not sort of jump through. Uh, see, I've just just by changing the threshold mat just a little bit, I've I've cleaned up some of those edges. You can see it's also a, a render intensive plugin in the sense that uh, as I as I pin up, it'll update the frame. It'll sharpen it quite a lot. So that's that's looking pretty good. Um, 
maybe adjust it a little bit more. I think that's that's going to be fine for the for this purpose. So I'm just going to hit process, and so this is 44 frames, and you can see a little bit of a Jello cam, but it's definitely a lot smoother than than what we had before, and we'll do an A B on that. Plus, I'm I'm zoomed in uh, over 150 percent, 168 percent, so that's also showing a lot of those details. So, so this is the field remove right here. So if I go to the beginning of, of those clips, you can see that's what it originally looked like. And then the uh, and if I toggle to the next one, you can see that we've gotten rid of those that combing. So the next one we're going to do is uh, this shot over here. Now this one, um, I actually did a, a lot of color correction too. I, I did a secondary color correction. I can actually show how that that works. That's the original shot right there, and then that's the that's the new shot. And uh, you can see though we've got a little bit of banding up in the sky. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. I'm just going to hold the F key down and copy that, that shot out to the desktop. And like I said, you can use it either way uh, as a timeline soft effect. And sometimes I just want to do it quickly on the desktop, create that new piece of media, and, and move on. So we'll just scrub into that frame with the sky. We'll click on the deband filter, and uh, we'll just tap the time code and we'll go into the, the effect. Now we'll just scrub into where where you can see the sky and one thing I want to mention too is that um, there's a way quickly to go between the source and the result so if you look here in the lower left there's a pop-up here it says result and then you click down and you get source so that's a way to toggle back and forth between what your original shot looked like and your results. So you can see very quickly how that's coming along. We just want to take a look at the sky and it, the quick way to toggle between the, uh, the, the, the source and the result is the F1 is for the source and the F4 button is the result. So if we toggle back and forth you can actually very quickly see with the default parameters. Oh, and by the way, if you need to add load the default parameters, if you get kind of like off the reservation, uh, hit right here on the lower right. It says load defaults. And also, I do want to mention too that by default the sparks only have one undo, but uh, Gen Arts, being very smart people, they've added an undo button over here as well. So it gives you multiple undos in terms of your workflow so you can avoid using that one in terms of this module and this set of plugins and stick with this undo button over here on the sort of underneath the the frame count so yeah we'll, we'll just toggle between the F1 and the F4 and you can see that it's uh, it's smoothing out the sky quite a lot so we can um, We've actually added quite a lot of pre-blur, blur, post-blur, and, and diffusion to it, and that's why the little seahorse is giving us some time to, to render it all. So I'm just going to hit load defaults and get back to the default values, and we can just toggle between the front and the results. And that's kind of a subtler look, but I want to add in a bit more of the post-blur into it and maybe adjust the edge threshold up a little bit. So we're toggling in between the, the source and result and that's all I really wanted to do is, is just sort of knock it down a little bit. So uh, we've got that shot and we added our deband to it and um, we're going to go ahead and, and just replace it. So I'm going to move the playhead to the beginning of the clip and just replace it here on the timeline. So here, here's uh, that shot we were just working on, and that's the note that I left for myself here. Uh, add blur motion. So let's let's take a look at that because it's it's really kind of a fun uh, look because this is a great shot. This guy's doing an amazing trick, 
but I just wanted to sort of add a bit more flash to it, which is the kind of the the point of of having these great plugins. So uh, yeah, let's tap on our Spark. We're gonna click over here. We're gonna go into the the browser. We're gonna find uh, Blur Motion Curve. We're gonna add that to that shot and then double tap that, and that's gonna take us into the take us into this browser. The way this works best is to kind of give it like a really cool kind of a snap zoom effect. So what I'm going to do is uh, holding down the I key, I'm going to quickly go through and, and add, set keyframes for all these parameters. And then go ahead just a tiny bit here and then add keyframes uh, here at their default values and that's going to sort of set the the boundaries so to speak of the inside and the outside of that parameter because we only want to do it you get the most effect for just doing it on a short short amount so we're going to really crank up that z distance I think I'll even go with uh, shifting it a little bit changing the center point and maybe adding a tad more rotation to it and then hitting the I key on all these parameters and make sure I'm setting a keyframe on all of them and then tapping here let's see what we got yeah that's that's pretty groovy And our control keyframes are holding up nicely, so we can just go back. So I just hit process, and that's just going to render that shot. And it's saying it's going to take about a minute. And it's kind of typical of, of some of the, uh, if you've ever, you back in the day in the Avid, where you were using that, uh, the blur motion and, and getting the, those crazy snap zoom kind of shots, uh, you're used to kind of the heavier render times because it's really a, an intensive uh, plug-in and, and it's it's actually quite improved with uh, the GPU acceleration you can see that that render is done I mean in the time I was talking about it so we can see that there we go we got some cool like zoom in snapping action I'm, I'm much happier with that now I think that's much much better kind of adds into that hyper real uh, effect of having those overlays and everything now this one is is uh, interesting because we want to um, we want to add in a transition, but the there's zero frame handles on both sides of that that cut, and we're kind of like uh, going from one sort of theme of the spot to the next. So I really want to add in a transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach into my bag of tricks. I'm just going to remove that and get it out of the way. I'm going to go back to over here where I have those transitions that I've pre-built and uh, this one is six, 12 frames and 6 frames so I'm just going to go ahead and and uh, move the cursor over here grab the swish pan hold the F key to copy it down and then uh, I've essentially just added a swish pan uh, on top of those two shots just a just that fast. That's just a some that's something that I just pre-built on the timeline on on the empty track, and I've saved it off. And I'm going to do the same thing with the glow transition here, and just put that on the middle. So we've got a, a glow and a blur happening at the same time. And I know that's that's actually kind of a fun look that that people like to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit process on that. And it's going it's going to look similar to what we had before in our our sort of test timeline where we're going through how the effects work and this is kind of just showing you how you would use that in a practical application so we've got the shot we've got a blur and a flash and uh, we're done it was just that fast and easy to sort of add a add a sapphire in as a transition effect where there's no handles so now we're going to go into uh, this composite a little bit and this has the uh, the H on it as as before with that spark that I showed you, which means that 
we can go ahead and um, just jump right back into that multi-layer composite that we were working with before. So I've got something a little bit set up for, um, for that over here. So this is, these are the, some of the elements that I use to, to create this, uh, this look. So what I've done is um, I had that, that clip with, uh, I mean, created a still a freeze frame out of it inside of Smoke. And you can see that I've created the freeze frame and I've done a little bit of rotoscoping and, and to cut the shape out and add a little motion blur and, you know, you can, you know, the action compositor is super deep and it works on a 3D environment. And I'm actually uh, moved a light in between the cutout to backlight it. So I can actually relight things and we're going to, We'll take a look at it, but we're not going to sort of get into it because that's that's sort of another another day sort of thing. We're just sticking with how we're using the Sapphire plugins to to get us there, though. And one of the the cool ones that I used is something that's very simple: is the shape plugin. So if I go back to the Sparks over here and I have shape preset, um, it's going to open it up over here on the right hand side these are my project default settings so this particular plugin doesn't require any kind of input so I get the white result cursor straight away and uh, you can see I've been experimenting with this a little bit so I'm gonna hit load defaults and that's how it had that's how it starts out it starts out as as a star and uh, I didn't talk about this yet but these are the on-screen controls uh, the on-screen controls allow you to rotate, uh, we can scale it and stretch it and do a lot of really fun things with that with that with any plugin really that has these um, on-screen widgets. So you can see as I move down uh, down here you can actually see that these values are updating. So we'll just zoom back out, and you can see that yeah, we are we're changing those values uh, on the fly. So yeah, I just wanted to go and, and show show you what I had before. Um, I'm just changing the the roundness of the shape, and then I'm giving it a little bit of a swirl, making it make kind of sort of ninja-ish, and then. Uh, I think I can add a little bit of blur into it as well, blur those edges up. And you can use this as a mat for or just about anything. You can use it in the Convolve uh, Spark as a Convolve source. And uh, it's one frame long, so I'm just going to render that really quick. And there we have this other star shape. And then uh, what I wanted to do is the background for that shot is the, the film damage, but I wanted to make it pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, and add in another spark, the dog vision spark, and and uh, I really I really like that in the in sense of you know you don't think of dog vision as anything you know cool, but it 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 kind of instantly gives you um, gives you like a kind of cool color palette to work with, just very quickly and very fast so I just tap on that film damaged clip so we went from plain freeze frame to film damage and now we're adding another layer we're adding uh, this dog vision and you can see that very quickly we get uh, a unique look just with these pop-ups and I kind of like that yellow blue because it made the the sky like really pop blue and uh, and the the yellow on the the snow border just really kind of stands out, and you can you know pop the brightness a little bit more, do a little bit of color correction in, inside of this plugin, and uh, and just really quickly get a, a fun look with really little effort to it, but it it makes it like really just like pop a lot more than it does. So I'm just gonna process that out. Uh, so we're doing two seconds of uncompressed HD on my little laptop here. So I'm just going to run through that really quick. And then uh, I'm going to show you how you can actually go ahead and, and change, um, change a complex composite um, 
and uh, update the look very quickly just with these couple of elements. So here's this new, uh, I did a, a one earlier, uh, but I, I like this one better. The little blur is helpful too. I added a bit more blur to it. So the way to get rid of stuff is just drag it to the bottom. So um, we're going to look back at the timeline. And then we have that H right there for the history. So if I go in and uh, let's see, I can also, so we got bam, we got pow, and we got bang. So I think I'm going to see, add a, change it to a B. I'm going to change it to boom from pow. So we got three Bs going on. So let's jump into that composite really quick. So if I double tap on the H, that's going to bring up the uh, composite. And here's the composite that I did. So uh, I've got the um, three views going on right now. And this is the center view is the top view. So you can see how the elements are laid out in Z-space. And the, the, this flat piece is what we're going to replace. That's the background. And you can see as I scrub through here how the, the elements are, are flying in. And uh, over here on the left-hand side, you can see the schematic. And that, that helps me keep track of, um, that shows me all the different elements and how they're all combined together. And uh, like I said, I'm not really going to get into a lot of detail with that. But you can see uh, here that the lights are actually behind those elements, and that's what's backlighting, and those that's what those little dots are right there. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and replace that background. So this is the B background layer. If I double tap on that, I'm going to select that new dog vision. So that's really made that background pop from before. And then uh, you can see here on the lower left, uh, so I replaced that with the dot, the, the the repeat of uh, the repeat the freeze frame with the film damage, and now it's got the dog vision on it. And then you can see the S for the shape, the S shape um, layer. And if I click on that, you can see the mat. So basically, it was just a a, a, a solid color that I've added this shape plugin to. So if I select the shape layer, double tap on that, I can select that new mat and that's instantly updated in my composite so you can see as it flies in I'll replace all three of them it might even be more fun that way because it's rotating and so it's it's like almost like that uh, that shape is is being warped by the by the speed and rotation that it's coming in so I think that's pretty cool and then we'll just do the last one right there so now you can see very quickly that we've updated that effect. We've got our blades in there. We've got that new background. And so I'm going to just go ahead and change that text from POW to BOOM. So I'm just going to select, double tap that text layer. And down here in the left, the, the bottom part of the screen, you can see where it says POW. And that's the, ty the typeface that I used, which is a really kind of a fun typeface. It's a uh, Vipnagor. I think that's how you say it. So I just tap in there, hit the escape key, type in boom, enter, and I got it. Those are the changes that the creative director said that they wanted. They wanted a different shape for that middle one and they wanted all Bs. So this is a 14 frame composite, multi-layered with uh, motion blur turned on. So when I hit return, it's going to go ahead and render out this com entire composite back to the timeline. So uh, it's it's going to take no, just not too long to, to get it all rendered out. You can see there's the there's uh, the motion blur on the text and on a guy flying out at us. And um, a bit zoomed in on the shot, but it actually is cool to be so zoomed in uh, because you can see how how good the quality of the imagery that you have that's happening inside of your your action compositor is. It's just really 
an amazing tool and and i i like using it you know not just for you know green screens or like the signs that i did or the scar placements but also as a motion graphics tool and this is how you can integrate using the sapphire sparks into the action compositor for you know using it to build up elements or cutting mats uh, there's just it's really unlimited the way that you can go ahead and, and use it So we're done already, and as soon as it, we're done, we're going to get kicked back to the timeline so we can just see how it looks in context. So there's our, our update right there. Cool. So to finish the spot off, what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to uh, add a couple of effects onto the entire spot. And I think that's really one of the uh, the key features of uh, using the sparks as a soft effect in the timeline is that you can go ahead and just give uh, your spot an overall look. So if I just tap in here, it's by default going to se select the entire duration of the timeline. You can see how it changes when there's um, the pieces. That's that, that transition that we did before. So I want to go above that. But um, I, this this layer here, that's a text soft effect. That's um, that's the credit for the music that was used in the spot. So we're going to keep that, but we don't want to have the that being affected. So uh, we're going to go ahead and select this layer, and we're going to go back to our pre-built uh, effects, which you know, as I said, is a great way of just having things uh, set aside. And I'm going to grab this film effect. And I'm going to drop this down, and and we'll be able to see, uh, you know, how it, how it changes the the video look of the spot to something a little bit more cinematic. So I'm just going to drop that on and apply it to the entire spot. So if I go over here and let's find kind of a cleaner uh, shot to take a look at, yeah, this one will work nicely. So if I move the playhead down and then move it up you can see that you know we've definitely done a color correction and added a little bit of contrast uh, with that one effect so then uh, I want to add a vignette because that's kind of something that I like to do and this vignette I've, I've pre um, you know set aside in sort of my bag of tricks so I hold the F key down and drop that onto that empty timeline and you can see that now uh, I just go up a level that we've added this vignette and vignette's probably a little bit tight so just double tap on that and um, I think I'm just gonna grab the on-screen widget for this guy and just pull it out like that and just get more of the corners and not so much in the middle and then maybe reduce the softness a little bit you can see how it's opening it up in the middle yeah that's cool great. Just wanted to thank everybody for uh, joining in on the webinar. Uh, I hope you uh, found some interesting uh, tips and tricks and found something that you'd like to, to use in your own projects. And you can see that, um, you know, with a, a little bit of creativity and, and a, an imagination that you can really take some footage that looks rather plain. And I don't mind saying that since I shot it. <laughs> uh, take things and 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 soup it up and and hot rod your footage with uh, with these plugins. So thanks again for listening to me, and I hope you found some like I said some some interesting tips and tricks. And and I'm definitely open for for questions uh, for workflow or how to use the plugins or anything you want to go over. So uh, we'll just turn it back to to Allison now.